thanks for joining and uh, listening to me. So I will talk about my side project. Uh, it's it's more an experiment, and I have to say it is not an OpenBSD project, right? Some people ask me about OpenBSD from time to time. I'm not actively working on OpenBSD right now. So this is just yeah, my my own little side project. So I um, I'm working professionally with Rust for uh, three years, maybe a little bit longer now. So I I initially had my my love hate relationship with the language, but meanwhile I I don't really want to work on C anymore. So that was one reason why I got a little bit, um, yeah, tired of 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 working on on uh, the C code and OpenBSD, and uh, yeah, didn't didn't contribute much in the area anymore. So then I wanted to write something new. So I went to RealID, and how could I? Possibly rewrite RealID from C to Rust. So, a quick overview. I give a short uh, history from uh, RealID. I mean, it's around 14 years old now, so that's quite quite some time already. And then uh, I will give an overview of my Rust RealID work and. Uh, the, the current status here and yeah how we can potentially get it done. So this is a very old picture I had in an old presentation as well that was uh Pierre Yves Richard who, and, and me we kind of started RealID. Um I, I merged in part of his code into my proof of concept at the time. And this was a uh, hackathon in Ito in 2008. So 2006 started it. Um, then it has this famous history of being, being renamed a few times, host D to host state D, and then later relay D. Um, the renaming happened at a at OpenCon actually in uh, in Italy, and yeah, it's still in use. Many years later, um, even without me, people are still actively maintaining it in OpenBSD and um, Beno, Claudio, and many people have done some improvements there. So yeah, I'm very thankful for that. Um, basic features of RealID. Okay, it started as a load balancer, some link balancing features, um, supports various health checks, and it's important for the Rust re-implementation later, it has four components of like layer three redirects. So that's how it started to um, do health checks and dynamically program um, PF tables. So that the PF RDR has a redirection target. Those targets depend on the relay D health checks. I later added the, the layer seven mode, the relay uh, that allows to do TCP relaying, header manipulation, and 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 so on. That's the old proof set setup. Um, so RealID from the beginning was designed in a way that it runs with multiple processes, and those processes use iMessages to communicate with each other. The term was coined by Henning, um, but it's used everywhere in uh, OpenBSD. And yeah, it's a simple internal RPC-like protocol. Uh, over socket pairs and processes. And um, yeah, RealID 
does not implement any threading or so on. It's it, uh, in the layer seven mode, it just forks a number of worker processes and each of those uh, processes is using lib event and uh, the, the async IO that it that it implements. So so much about the past. Um, now about uh, Rust relating. So in 2019, uh, I had some time and then I started working on HTTP. P2 support for RelayD, and I actually made some pretty good progress there. I, I had like basic uh, HTTP2 core engine. I had the HPAC protocol. Um, it was all written in C, and I actually talked about it at EuroBSDCon. And there, I, I jokingly mentioned that I could, as a future step, rewrite RelayD. That are relayed in in Rust, but then the many things changed. Yeah, the the pandemic hit, and during this time, I how lost interest in C, and I don't know. Everyone had probably a situation where you really had to realign a little bit, and um, I focused on on my my work project and there we had a very interesting project at at kraken where we uh introduced a new rpc gateway where like all the requests that on the kraken platform coming in are are handled and uh we wrote this in in rust in async rust in tokyo and it's just amazing how how fast this is and how low the latency is. So it this inspired me to uh, to have a look at RelayD and see okay how can we first implement RelayD in Rust and then later see um, how we can benefit from from all those additional performance improvements that we we have with like the um async uh, thread pool and so on so kind of like bringing those two worlds uh, to so the design goals are initially to have compatibility with the openbsd relay D. um i mean that is probably necessary, and, and people ask me why <laughs> adding this complexity. But for example, I'm not using a TOML configuration file or YAML or whatever as model right now. I want to be able to pass a relay conf file and and run with it. Another important thing that I utilize Rust, uh, the async Rust that's stable since. Um, late 2019, we, we have this native uh, ASIN port in Rust. And Tokyo.io is basically the ASIN runtime, can be compared to lib end if we, if we do a far stretch in, in C. Um, the concepts are totally different, but that's basically the library that, that is. Um, very good for async trust. So my roadmap is to start with the privilege separation part because um, I think that's a common problem with um, with with Rust services. Like I hear it all the time. I work with many very good Rust engineers, and and uh, but I hear it many times that. Uh, kind of trust on the, the language and say, okay, the language is secure. And then that's about it. Yeah. But you have to do a lot more to keep Rust secure. And one concept is that those fat binaries that are very common, right? You you compile your 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 service, you have one binary, 
one process, a single process, and then the, all the protection that you get is, is maybe a Docker container. Um, that is something that I don't want to do. I want to keep privilege separation. I want to have multiple processes for isolated tasks. I actually want to have a Unix style daemon, not, not just a Docker process. Um, so the goal is to have privilege separation in Rust as we are doing it in C. Um, so this was my focus. As I said, mostly a side project, so I didn't move on so uh, quickly here. But this is mostly done. The the next thing is like to to have like a, what we call the daemon, right? Like the relay D core source code. There there there's foundation. The, as I said, the configuration parsing, and then it goes into the details. So the first thing that I released is when you do Rust development, then you have to release some Rust traits. Um, is it a good thing? I don't know, but uh, that's what I released. Uh, the Prif um is my code base where we are implement like the Demon framework, the privilege separation, async logging, but in a style that is not quite openbsd.c, but coming close. So it can actually do syslog when you run it in a background, or standard error logging when you do it in the foreground. Syslog support these days is very, really poor because most people just log to foreground. So, yeah, I, I, I use uh, uh, like um, here because I want to keep this and I want to be able to run this in the ground as a as a daemon. But you can also run it in the foreground and, and log to a standard error. So, looking at the Rust code there. Are some source files right now. Uh, you have a configuration. You have the different. Um, yeah, in in in, in OpenBSD RelayD, we called it the engines. So the engines um, are the the different processes. We have the parent process, the the health, the redirection is what what uh, filter later, and uh, layer seven relay. Um, you can configure this here that already works with, with the Prifzap uh, trade in such a Rust uh, enum where you uh, where you use uh, proc macros to declare your config. This can be compared a little bit with those tables that we have in most Prifzap daemons where you define the relation between the different processes. The configuration is generated in in, in this one uh, macro, and it it uses uh, the when you define health here, then it uses the, the module health RS or however you you define the module and calls the main function in there. And so all this is done in in in, in Prefect RS create you. You create uh, a bunch of stub files. You have this this uh, core definition, and your 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 parent um, calls and does all the file descriptor passing of the uh, socket communications and all that. Here is even a, a feature where you, I connect the processes uh, redirect and relay with the health engine. That's like the relay does it, right? The health engine does the health checks and then it sends messages to the other processes that are hosted down or up. And this attribute here, I, I can configure that they're connected to each other and, and can uh, talk with each other. The configuration style is uh, a problem actually, because as I said before, like most modern uh, software is using kind of like a standard language, YAML or TOML or 
whatever, um, be even Jason. <laughs> but uh, I didn't want to do that, right? So the YAML and TOML can be parsed in, in, in Rust very easily. You use a 30 crate where you basically just define different struct, makes them serializable, uh, and uh, Rust. The, the, the different backend library makes it work for you. Yeah? So you you just specify the types and uh, you can convert it to YAML or, or TOML and back. This is actually very convenient. But in a case of like a relay decon from the parse.y style, it's an actual grammar. We, we need a parser, a parser that knows the, uh, yeah, the syntax and so on. So I, I decided use NOM for that. That's a very popular parser in Rust, um, or it's actually a parser combinator. So it's not not yuck where you have a BNF style or all that. Your parser is actually, you declare it with Rust functions that call each other. So there's only a, a, a fraction from, from the config parser, but Basically, you 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 can define uh, that's actually enum, not num, but that's a typo. Um, you define an enum, for example, with your different actions that you have in the in the daemon uh, configuration file, and th those are the return values. And then you you can write uh, functions that uh, use um, the num library to to, to do the matching. So uh, here the, the sec basically the core entry point where where it uh, checks the the, the different um, keywords. Uh, interval itself is a function that checks the interval keyboard and then the syntax there, the, the time uh, that we have specified there. So it parses it and then returns uh, a new section data that eventually it's actually a really nice way to write a, a parser by just by declaring those functions. Old versions of num used uh, macros are quite ugly. I think I don't really like working with with uh, Rust macros, but with uh, the new new version, you can just uh, use this. Uh, Function style and, and and create your parser combinator with with a native Rust syntax. The health service is actually something that is uh, relatively easy in 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 Rust compared to C because um, the the health checks can can now run in in in, in parallel, um, they um, the all the, the 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 framework to set up TCP connect ICP ICMP and so on is 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 easier, and um, we have async DNS. We have all those things that took us a long time to get there in, in C uh, in 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 Rust already, and um, that's that's the easiest service part basically that can be Im implemented here. So the design of the health check engine is still the same. It, it, it runs in an interval of like by default every 10 seconds. It, it, it runs all the, the tests and and then for, for each host in each table it, it re tracks the status of the host up or down. Uh, in difference to C, and that's an old bug that uh, with these relay D is like obviously it's just like linear. It's going through all the hosts within those ten seconds, and uh, it it can happen when you have many hosts, even if they're using async, but they're run concurrently and not in parallel. So when you when you have many hosts, it can can happen that uh, one host gets scheduled so late in the in the cycle that it runs into this hard 10 seconds time time mode, even if the check was was fine basically. And 
with 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 async Rust, it's uh, it's uh, not the problem anymore here. Why? Because Tokyo um, implements um, a multi-threaded scheduler. So every async that you you have um, can run on different threads, and, and Tokyo itself is managing this uh, transparent with a thread stealing uh, approach. So this is a reason when you look at the old table where I had multiple relay processes that I decided, okay, I just need one relay process. There is no security benefit or whatever benefit of, of having multiple processes, but now the, the single relay process uses a Tokyo thread pool so I can handle my connections in 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 parallel. The nice thing is um, threading in Rust is actually one of the strengths because all the uh, the concepts of the language make it really hard to uh, to run into the same problems that you, you have in, in in C. So locking is uh, is nice because when you when you acquire a lock, it automatically runs out of context. When 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 you leave the block, you you don't never have to care about unlocking. Um, then Rust has built in uh, thread safety mechanisms uh, with with like the send and sync traits and so on. So it it cannot fully prevent uh, race condition. It's still possible uh, by logical errors. But the, one of the core strengths of uh, Rust and async Rust, especially, is that you can build async threaded uh, programs very easily and they scale very, very well. So that's why I decided okay, I only need one relay process. And Mostly the, the 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 current situation, um, as I said, I'm but but slowly. So then the, the, I'm currently working on the health check engine and uh, more of the configuration grammar. Um, the next is not not relay D but relay. So the I want to start with the. Um, the uh, TCP uh, redirections, TLS, and so on. Um, EF integration is going to be a challenge because uh, it is possible, of course, but uh, doing IOCTLs from Rust means that you have to write a lot of unsafe code. Um, so unsafe code is what Rust calls uh, what directly accesses uh, pointers, raw memory, and, and so on. And so you um, IOCTLs uh, is, is one of the worst examples. It's, it's certainly possible, but uh, it's, it is um, not really uh, nice to do it in, in, in Rust. And that's by design. There is a public library to access PF from Rust, the, the dev PF interface. But yeah, I'm, that is more for Mac OS and uh, I'm not sure if I want to do that. So this this is something I, I, I move back. And right now it doesn't support a control socket. Uh, the, the control socket like the relay CTL, is first it's, it's quite optional and then the second thing, it, it, it's not too too difficult. It's just not my, my priority right now. Um, the other thing about this is that this relay D can can easily work on uh, OpenBSD, that's where I do my main development, but also on Mac OS and uh, maybe even Linux. Just for Linux, I don't know, the, the redirect will probably just not be supported and maybe later Somebody comes up and do the implements whatever uh, Linux does, but that's not not my goal. But uh, I want to be able to use it on uh, macOS or BSDs and 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 open. 
So, so much about the slides. Um, there, there are more things uh, to mention is uh, file descriptor passing is a feature that, that I implement in the Prefab RS crate, but it's also in 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 the Rust core library, not the whole Prefab thing, but just the ability to to do the C C message style file descriptor passing. That is uh, in in the Rust nightly version and uh, will hopefully be available in one of the future releases. This makes it easy to remove a little bit from the from the uh prefab rs crate and and then have like one maintained standard way to 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 do those uh messages with ancillary data um i didn't write it i was involved there and, and i fixed it on openbsd and mac os and they, they merged my patch so uh, there's a chance that, that we will get this. So now I hope that you still see me. Okay. Um, Can you can you see me? Hear me? You don't have to see my face, but um. So questions. Where can we find the source code? So the Isabar uh, source code is right now, uh, as I said, like on Crates.io and on GitHub. Yeah, I'm, I'm using GitHub actually. And uh, the RelayD source code is is also on GitHub, but uh, I think it's still private. But uh, I I will make make it uh, public. In, in, in the next days, it's still fairly early, um, but I'm definitely moving moving forward now. Actually, I have my motivation that maybe one day to replace some uh, whatever HAXI or something like this um, w with that. <laughs> so, but right now, as I said, it's mostly a side project. So let me oh. where is your code? Okay, yeah. It's definitely going to be open source. No, no worries. It's all just uh, uh, up. so so you can still hear me. The, I cannot say much about the tooling on on on, on BSD, but uh, I know on, on BSD there are is very good uh, support uh, for for Rust. Uh, Samari is doing a great job to 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 get it into OpenBSD, and there is some work as I heard that people are experimenting with like uh, writing Rust based things like that but none of this is officially supported right now I, I i don't think that 
PO wants uh, Rust and OpenBSD yet. Yeah, so for me, it's it's real ID because I have the experience with running this um, high performance uh, gateway at, at Krak, and I know I have a good feeling there uh, what needs to be done. I always need need a connection to my interest to to the production use eventually, but um, I I don't know. I mean. Um, what what would be interesting for 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 other people core core utilities um would it be worth rewriting ls and all that i mean the openbsd base utilities are pretty good and they have pledge and and, and everything so we don't really have to rewrite everything just for the sake of of rewriting it so i would say anything that is somehow performance bound rust is making it so better as we finally can safely use async and threading there. Okay. Anything else? I heard we're we're running running out of time. Limitation. Okay. One, one run. The this is with some ugly debug message in between. Um, with the health check engine I'm working on right now. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>